figuring out all of the logistics and the details and testing out the concept. Some projects don't make it past that stage for whatever reason. It might be because the league uh, support has changed for it. It might be that the partner uh, partnership falls through, um, or there may just not be the need anymore. Um, so that's kind of the initial bucket. Then you have standalone projects as we think about all of the projects that we currently have today. Um, so between the lines, for example, uh, Kids in the Kitchen, those are all considered standalone projects. They also grow and evolve over time too. So we typically we start out small and Backpack Buddies is a great example as we added an additional grade um, and learned new things year over year. Um, and then projects will come to a point in time where they're either retired, they roll off to another community member, um, or they may be reinvented. So we may take a look at um, recreating what that project is. Um, some projects are retired because the league interest may change and there may no longer be um, the desire within the league to support that particular initiative. Um, they may also roll off because we found a great community partner. So Books for Kids, for example, rolled off into Read Indeed, which was an organization already in existence. So we took on a much more consultative role um, with that particular organization. And sometimes they're reinvented. Most likely, it's going to be those first two buckets um, where projects are going to fall in. In the past, projects have had a lifespan of four to six years, typically right around five years. Um, and that has been kind of our general rule of thumb of, hey, we should have some type of opinion of what is going to happen with these projects. Ultimately, the goal is to create projects that are sustainable and continue to serve the needs of those people that it is addressing. Um, it could be within the league that a project continues on. So if you think about League Airs, that's been a project for us for many, many years. We have not rolled it off um, entirely. Um, it could be a project that has a much shorter lifespan because there's a community partner ready to absorb that need. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Becca, who's gonna help facilitate some conversation with our panelists. Thank you. So we have a lot of lead experience with these three ladies. Um, uh, I know a few of their bios and kind of their background, and we have a lot of community work here, but also outside of the community work, um, you know, other areas and other pillars of the league. So what I'm going to have them do is just give their background a little bit, um, not only in the community pillar, which affects all of us, but also outside of it. So you can get an understanding of that, but um, I believe, are you on board? Yes. Yeah, so every, yep. they've all been on the board in numerous different positions, I think. So um, I'm going to have them explain uh, their background, both here in the league, then also outside of the league. And then um, lastly, just kind of go into that second question of what the projects you've worked on, and then also what was your favorite project. It might be hard to choose, but um, your favorite project. So, sure. Um, hi again, I'm Karen Nagel. I have been in the league since 2003, I believe, so I've been around a while. Um, most of my time has been, uh, <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, most of my time has actually been um, in the community pillar, um, primarily on the project side. Um, and then just these past couple of years, I shifted over into um, different pillars. I figured towards the end of my career life, or my league life, um, I would get a little bit more experience in other pillars. Um, so last year I was on the nominating committee, and this year I am serving on the special events committee. Um, but within the community pillar, um, I was able to participate in quite a few of the different projects that we had. Um, the first was Books for Kids, which you probably know a little bit about. It's now transitioned out of the league, but that it was just a few years ago that that happened, so it's, you'll still hear lots of, a lot of rumblings about it. Um, I was actually on that project the very first two years that um, it was in existence. Um, and so for that reason, I'll already answer my, my favorite um, project to work on. It was that one. Um, and I think it was partially because I was part of the initial group that started it, and I had um, amazing chairs the first two years. I served as a committee, at, uh, committee member at large the first year and then a director the second year. Um, and just to have really strong leadership um, was, re was really good for me my first couple years in the league. It, it really um, taught me what, what it means to be a chair. Um, and then I was able to participate in, um, I guess I did breakfast buddies after that as a chair. 
um, which was a mentoring program for uh, middle school girls in St. Louis Park. Um, then I did Gilda's Club, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Uh, that is one that uh, transitioned out rather quickly. Um, then Helping Hands, and then I served on the board as VP of Community. So that's a quick snapshot. Um, and then outside of the league, I actually do similar work. Um, I was at Target in Community Relations for several years, uh, which is the department that manages all the nonprofit giving for the company, um, and decided to make a move out of Target last November, and I actually transitioned to one of my nonprofits that I had been funding at Target called Serve Minnesota, and we fund all of the AmeriCorps programs in the state of Minnesota. Um, I do fundraising for them and specifically focus on two of our education programs called Reading Corps and Math Corps. And that's a little snapshot. Awesome. Michelle? Mine is not that long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Michelle Fennig. I've been in the league, I think, since 2007. I, other than, uh, I was a new member, core group advisor my first year, and then I moved right over to projects. Never left, it seems. Um, I was, I started Between the Lines, its first year, and then I stuck around for another year, so I chaired it actually two years when I was Vice President of Projects. What else? Oh, outside of the league. Huh? Real life. Oh yeah, in real life. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite? Yeah, favorite. favorite. Well, let me see, Between the Lines. <laughs> <laughs> it's always that one that you spend, like, all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, in real life, I'm an insurance agent, <clears throat> not that exciting, but um, in the past I've done fundraising for a national organization and did one to some events and like really fun stuff like that. <laughs> so in a previous life, so that's uh, my personal life. My favorite project is probably Between the Lines, although Hooks for Kids is pretty impressive. It really so you was. really exciting chair. I did. She was fantastic. <laughs> You're not pleased at all, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, actually, when I was on that, I was on um, Books for Kids, my new member year, when you couldn't if you wanted to be on a committee, and I was on Books for Kids. And you just, I just sort of sat there in that room full of books and went, I don't know where these all came from. I don't know what we're going to do them. But it's pretty impressive. So, it was pretty impressive. We do a lot of great things, and sometimes you forget that, but it's just, so I'm Heather Tansy. Um, I started in the league the same year Karen did actually, so 2003 I guess. And I've, I've done, a, I've probably got about half and half community and non-community um, pillars. So I started, um, but I think the community pillar is more my passion. So in terms of community, I was a community member on Smart Sense, which was a, a project that we used to do where we taught financial literacy to underserved kids, and we worked a lot, especially in the last two years when I was on Smart Sense, in how do we talk about financial literacy with um, children who are of the Muslim faith, and how do you think about um, credit uh, when there are some, if you're familiar with the Muslim faith in the Quran, there are um, limitations to how you think about credit, and so we developed a program for that particular community. Um, so I was a member of that community and then a chair. And then I also went on to chair books for kids, and I was vice president for projects. And then outside of the community pillar, oh, and now I'm on this committee. So, and then outside of the um, community pillar, I was a, the transfers chair. I was on TLD, so training and leadership development. And I was the vice president for administration, so just handling our office staff and some of the organization parts of the league. So, outside of the league, I work at 3M, and I'm a sustainability manager there, which essentially means I do a lot of our work around external communications around what we're doing from a sustainability standpoint, employee education and engagement, and then we work pretty closely with our product development teams around the sustainable products. What was your favorite project? Oh, Books for Kids. Loved it. <laughs> it had just it was a ball. Books for Kids was really fun. It was um, the second project I chaired. Um, I think what I loved about it was a really big committee, and we were all really excited to be there and really motivated. Mm -hmm. And I had two directors that were on the committee with me that we became extremely close friends and we still are today and we just, we just had a blast and I think there's something so rewarding about being on a committee like Books for Kids because you, you just feel like you're making a difference because you're able to, mm -hmm. you know, I was telling these guys earlier, the last time I was here was because they um, ended up turning over a big group of books and so we all came into boxes and boxes of books and mm -hmm. just, you know, you felt like you were really making a difference because mm -hmm. you did all the collecting and then you actually got to see the kids take the books and they were so excited. Well, it's by far the most 
work I've ever put into a project, so oh. just in blood, sweat, and tears, and yep. then I got the most out of it. So when I think back to what my hours were a month, oh, when I was chair yeah. of that, it was <laughs> as they were long. Long. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess first, um, before I forget, it's Michelle's birthday oh, in two days on <laughs> Thursday. That was something I was going to bring up, but I totally forgot to wish you happy birthday on Friday. It's a happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, it's not that Um, But um, maybe, Karen, you can start with um, Books for Kids. And if you can explain it, because I think we have a lot of new members, um, just explain what it was. Sure. And then also, um, the second question is how, how did it, because you said you were in the first couple of years, mm -hmm. maybe you can add to it too, but how did it come to fruition? Sure. And, like, you know, how is the beginning phase kind of like what we're dealing with right now, like two new projects? Yeah. Can you just share experience of how it grew? Sure. Um, so feel free to jump in because I'll miss two bits here. Books for Kids, um, it really, at the, at the kind of root of it, was a book drive, um, a massive book drive where we um, primarily relied on members to host their own kind of miniature book drives, but then we also had public drop-off sites. So for example, Fox Swim Schools was one of our drop-off sites um, where we were collecting books for at-risk students or children in Minneapolis. Um, and it ranged from birth through probably eighth, seventh grade-ish, 14-ish. Um, and, and then we, were, we had a very specific distribution process for how those books were distributed to those kids to make sure that we were um, we were providing them to the right kids that really needed them, and then also making it as easy as possible for the recipient organizations. So they didn't have to come to us to get the books. We had a whole trucking process, and um, if they needed to go in our, the back of our car, we, we got them there. Um, so that's the gist of it. Um, in the early, there was also a reading program that we were trying to um, establish along with that. So not only give the books to the kids, but also establish some kind of ongoing reading program. Um, we had a few more difficulties getting that off the ground. Um, in the length of Books for Kids, the book drive was definitely the most steady, consistent part of the project. And the reading program had some really great wins along the way, but was never a consistent format. Um, and I think that's, there are a lot of reasons why that may have happened. I think partially though, it's um, really the reality of when our volunteers are available. Um, if you think about kids and when they, I know this is probably no news to you guys, this project development, but kids are available <laughs> during the school day or right before school or right after school. Our volunteers are primarily available in the evenings and weekends. And so trying to find um, the kids that need the, the actual reading program and the volunteers that are able to give them that resource can be really challenging. And that's probably what you'll find as you move forward with these um, new projects as well. It's just the reality of what type of volunteers we have. We're busy women and with families and careers, and um, so it can be a challenge. But with that said, um, hugely successful program in Air Project, and in my eyes at least. Um, the very first year, um, so I was thinking about this, Kirsten Muller, who couldn't be here tonight, she was the chair of project development, so similar to Christina. Um, and Books for Kids was actually being incubated under project development that first year. Um, but I would have to say that the whole committee, it really became like a Books for Kids committee that first year because we wanted to make sure that we got a book drive up and running that, that very first year. Um, and so that year, project development kind of took um, a side, side seat a little bit to the actual book drive. Um, and it exceeded our expectations incredibly. I think we, you know, you, you don't even know what goal to set because we're like, well, how many, how many books is that shelf? We have no idea. Um, so we, so we, <laughs> yeah, I bet she does. Now, now, <laughs> but when you're first setting, you're like, I have no idea. So I think we set our goal at, I don't know, it was either five or 10,000, and we got like double that. Um, so we, you know, it's when you, it seems like, oh yeah, you, you collect a few books and you give them out. But it was really that whole collection, and then we sorted the books so that they were appropriate age level. So we didn't just give an organization a box full of books that were random. We made sure that we had birth through three years old and four and five years, et cetera. Um, and so we had to develop the whole process of receiving the books in a warehouse space, um, then setting up kind of a, a sorting process. And volunteers came in, junior league volunteers came in to help with that. Um, and then a counting process because you want to know how many how many books you had in each category, which seems really easy, but it's not. 